Few events have had an impact on our nation like the California Gold Rush. This phenomenon ushered in a wave of mass migration and forever changed the landscape of the United States. The impact this monumental event had on our economy simply cannot be overstated. The waves of the gold rush were felt throughout our entire nation. And it all started at a humble sawmill in Northern California. Sutter's Mill was nestled in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains, right at the bank of the American River. Today, this area is called Coloma, California. Early in the morning, on January 24th, 1848, a mill worker named James W. Marshall went about his routine inspection of the riverbank below the mill. When Marshall peered into the water, he noticed something glistening and grabbed it for inspection. After performing a number of tests on the material, he and his partner John Sutter determined that their suspicions were correct. It was gold. Marshall and Sutter had tried to keep their discovery a secret, but news of this magnitude was simply uncontainable. By March of 1849, a renowned journalist named Samuel Brennan confirmed the discovery. Brennan even went so far as yelling in the streets of San Francisco, gold, gold on the American River. In the following months, the discovery was picked up by papers all across the country and President James K. Polk officially confirmed the news in an address to Congress. By the end of 1849, an influx of 90,000 miners from around the world, nicknamed 49ers, moved to California in hopes of striking it rich. Many of those prospectors did strike it rich, which encouraged even more people to move out west. In 1850, census records show California had a population of about 90,000 residents. Just a decade later in 1860, that population figure had quadrupled to nearly 380,000. With such a massive influx of gold in the economy, Congress authorized the establishment of a branch mint in San Francisco. Before the mint was up and running, there was still a pressing need for coinage in California. A number of private mint operations began opening up to provide reliable coinage for the people in that area. It wasn't until 1854 that the San Francisco Mint opened its doors and began striking raw gold ore into coins for circulation. In addition to the new branch mint, Congress also authorized the production of two brand new coins, a gold dollar and a gold double eagle. There have been talks of a gold dollar in the decades leading up to the gold rush. Those plans never came to fruition. With so much raw gold now at the government's disposal, the door was finally opened. As for the double eagle, this was now the largest denomination for a gold coin in U.S. history. Before this time, there was hardly a need for a denomination larger than a $10 gold eagle. But for the sake of efficiently storing the coins in banks and other financial institutions, a larger gold piece became necessary. Though the gold dollar and gold double eagle have long been retired, the San Francisco Mint still remains in operation to this very day. In fact, San Francisco is largely responsible for producing our nation's stunning proof coinage. When James Marshall went about his morning routine in January of 1848, he certainly wasn't expecting to make a discovery that would forever change the trajectory of an entire nation. However, this is what happened, and it made for some of our richest numismatic history. Liberty Head double eagles, gold dollars, and other San Francisco struck gold coins are some of the closest ties we have to the California gold rush. 
actual tokens of history we can hold in the palms of our hands. To this very day, Sutter's Mill remains a popular destination for countless tourists every single year. And James Marshall's impact remains felt around the world.